In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called predicting relative boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. In this problem, you're going to be given four different solutions. Well, one of them isn't a solution, it's just pure water. And you're being asked to rank these four solutions in terms of their freezing point and their boiling point. So you're not being able, or you're not being asked to calculate the actual freezing and boiling point, you're just being asked to rank them. Let's begin by just kind of looking at some of the information you're going to need to solve these problems. The freezing point of these solutions is calculated um, using the freezing point depression equation. Delta Tf is I, Kf, little m, where I is the Van't Hoff factor and little m is the molality. And the boiling point equation is basically the exact same thing. The change to the boiling point is I, the Van't Hoff factor times kb times little m. Kb and Kf are constants. The little m is the molality. So for all of these problems, we're going to need to know what the I value is, and we're also going to need to know what the molality is. And that's going to be a little bit tedious just in terms of calculations. Uh, let's go through and do the I's first. I, the Van't Hoff factor, is the number of cations and anions that are present in an ionic compound. An ionic compound is a compound that contains uh, at least one metal and at least one nonmetal. So when we look at the first molecule here, we see carbon, a nonmetal, hydrogen, a nonmetal, oxygen, a nonmetal. This is nonmetal, nonmetal, nonmetal. This is not an ionic compound. For substances that are not ionic, the value of I is just one. Second compound, KCl. K is a metal, Cl is a nonmetal, metal plus nonmetal. That means we have an I value greater than one. We have one cation, potassium. We have one anion, chloride. So for this, I equals two. One cation plus one anion. And our last one here, C2H6O2, carbon, nonmetal, hydrogen, nonmetal, oxygen, nonmetal. All nonmetals means I equals one. We're not going to be calcul calculating anything at all for pure water. It's not a solution. It doesn't have an I value. It doesn't have a molality, whatever. Okay, so in addition to knowing the I value, we also need to know the molalities of all of these solutions. And this is the part that's going to be kind of tedious because we're going to have to calculate the molality three times in this problem, starting with the propylene glycol, C3H8O2. Um, we need to calculate, first of all, the number of moles that we have. We've got 6.4 grams. We need to know the molecular weight of C3H8O2. I went ahead and looked it up. It's about 76 grams per mole. So that means that for C3H8O2, we have 0. 0 0.08, roughly 0 0.08 moles. We don't need to be super exact with these calculations because we're not actually entering the freezing or boiling point in. We just need to get a relative number. Um, once we get the number of moles, we want to divide that by the mass of the solvent in kilograms, 250 milliliters. It's telling us that the density is one gram per Milliliter, so 250 milliliters is 250 grams in this case, which is 0.25 kilograms. 0.25 kilograms. So this guy's molality is 0.33. We'll just go with 0.34. And then um, let's do next, let's do our potassium chloride. KCl. So again, we have 6.4 grams of potassium chloride. I looked the molecular weight up for potassium chloride. It is 75 grams per mole. 6.4 divided by 75 is 0 0.08. Ooh, got to be a little bit careful here because it's also 0 0.08. Point, uh, this is actually 0 0.09, 0 0.085. In the same amount of water, so again, 250 milliliters, which is 0.25 kilograms, 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.25 is 0.36. And then our last one, the ethylene glycol, 6.4 grams of ethylene glycol, C2H6O2. The molecular weight of ethylene glycol is 62 grams per mole. 6.4 divided by 62 is 0.1 mole divided by the same amount of water, 250 milliliters. 
uh, gives us a molality of 0.4. Okay, so now that we've got our molalities calculated, what are we going to do in terms of ranking these things? Well, first of all, we're going to remember that the freezing point always decreases. So as we add solute, that means that the freezing point is always going to be going down. Um, so that tells us that our solution, our, our pure water that's not a solution, this is going to have the highest freezing point out of all of them because adding a solute makes the freezing point decrease. So the pure water is going to have the highest freezing point. Um, what, how are we supposed to rank this? One in the column with the lowest freezing point. So since water has the highest freezing point, that means it's going to be a four because it's the highest. And we're also going to remember for the boiling point, the boiling point always increases. As you add solute. So that means that for the pure water, uh, as we add solute, the boiling point is going to go higher and higher and higher. So pure water is going to have the lowest of all of the boiling points. So we're going to call this uh, a one lowest boiling point. The extent to which the freezing point decreases is calculated by this equation right here. Delta Tf equals Ikfm. And for this first solution, I is 1. I'm just going to write that in. Kf is a constant, whatever it is. And the molality of our first solution, propylene glycol, is 0.34. So the change to the freezing point for this first solution is 0.34 times whatever Kf is. For the second solution, the change in the freezing point is the value of I, which we said is 2, times the freezing point constant, times its molality, which is 0.36, which works out to be 0.72 times the value of Kf. And for the third solution, the change to the freezing point is its Van t Hoff factor 1 times the value of Kf times its molality, which is 0.4, which is a 0.4 times Kf. So what we're getting from these comparisons is that um, the first solution is going to have the least significant change, least significant change to the freezing point because 0.34 times Kf is going to be smaller than 0.72 times Kf or 0.4 times Kf. So if water has the highest and this one has the least significant change, that's going to make this guy be a number three. The, the most significant change is this one right here, 0.72 times Kf. So that's this solution right here. That one's going to have the most significant change and this guy is going to be right in the middle. Now, if we wanted to make these all of, uh, do the same thing for boiling point, all that we'd be doing here is changing our Fs to um, Bs because the equation is exactly the same. So again, the least significant change to the boiling point is going to be this first solution right here because 0.34 times the constant is going to be less than 0.72 times the constant or 0.4 times the constant. So this is going to have the least significant change. If our baseline is at 1, the least significant change is going from 1 to 2. This one will have the most significant change because 0.72 times Kb is greater than 0.4 times Kb or 0.3 times Kb. So this one's going to be a 4 and this one's going to be in the middle.